Good morning, fellas. Can you see me? Probably not. How's that? I'm backlit a little bit today because I'm doing some more work on a heated gantry that we use in the pub kitchen. So, I'm Harry, this is Harrison's Brewery, and this is Harry Brew 69, which is me. This is my channel, and uh, well, we do all sorts here. And one of the things that we're gonna be doing today is having a look at the electronics that control a heated gantry or a heated pass or heat lamps for a commercial kitchen. So this particular model is bespoke, it's something that I've built in this workshop and it's been in operation for almost two years now and I've just made some new modifications to it. We made some recently but we've decided it's time to upgrade yet again. So the additions that have happened this week are another layer, so we've got another three heated lamps so we can now serve nine meals at one time before it was just six. And then also I've upgraded the controller. Uh, we had the controller that was in there previously was powerful enough, but it was running hot. And of course I didn't want this to be running hot because it's not really very well ventilated and the kitchen is hot anyway. So we've upgraded the control system. It is basically just, well, here's one we made earlier actually. So it's, it's almost like a trimmer pot system that runs on a variac to uh, pulse width modulate the power going out and just by twisting this potentiometer we can increase and decrease the brightness of the, of the heat lamp as, as you can see here. And these are all relatively cheap electronics from RS components and eBay and the like. So what we're looking to do now is separate each layer of the gantry so this is the front of the panel as it was existing and we had one main power switch to turn the whole thing on and off then the potentiometer dial was in the middle with some homemade uh, ratings on there for cool medium and hot this indicator just told you that the heat lamp was on but to be fair that it's obvious that the heat lamp is on, but sometimes if you're running it at the lowest setting, the lights are so dimly lit, you can't tell it's on, so it's handy to have that there. But we're probably going to perhaps remove that today, I'm not sure. And what I want to do is add another three, uh, another two um, on and off switches so we can control each layer individually. And then at the bottom, just because I could, we've added um, a 30 milliamp trip double socket just so the guys can use blenders and that kind of thing during prep before service. The back of this is relatively simple as you can see it's just wired in straight into the sockets. We're probably going to come straight into the sockets from the mains and then we'll piggyback out of these sockets into the controller itself. If we have a look in the controller so I've just brightened the image up a little bit so you can see it. What we've actually done here is we've mounted the circuit board on the back of the control box and I've made an improvement already by taking off the original heat sink and replacing it with one that is twice the size. This will help with cooling of course. So if I just show you in comparison, that's the heat sink that we took off. This is a big one that we've got. I was even flirting with the idea of having an external heat stink with this big monster but decided it was probably overkill. The uh, controller came with its own cooling fan so I've just attached it to the side of this heat sink. It also has a detachable potentiometer. We'll probably extend these wires so it can reach the front of the control box. And other than that it's very simple dumb electronics. This is the brain box of the whole system and this is a uh, Readily available, like I say, on the internet, these uh, variable current controllers, I think they're called, or variable voltage, I can't remember. 
So the next job for me is to cut some holes into the control panel front, add some more switches and then we'll, we'll assemble the whole thing and see if it works. Currently it's running at full power and it's drawing 1.8 amps. Oh no, that's gone right up. It's drawing 10 amps now actually, which is quite a, quite a current. Two kilowatts, 2.3 kilowatts. So when it's warmed up and heated, it's drawing 2.2 kilowatts and it's putting out some real heat. So what I'm gonna do is turn it off. It's warm up current was 1.8 amps. And we're gonna see how hot this heat sink. You know what, it's not warm at all. So that tells me that this is over engineered for the project. This is a seven kilowatt transformer or regulator and if it's running 2.3 kilowatts, we've well overrated it for this particular project. So I'm gonna go and make some more holes and we'll come back. I don't know what I'm bending down for, I could just do this. We'll come back when we've got the whole shebang a little bit more assembled. Quite miraculously, we have completed the wiring and I think it looks rather neat. I do, do love using these Wagos. Beforehand, I did have these little, uh, what would you call them, bus bars in there but the way goes are that good. We don't need to take up the space and it gives lots of uh, room for air circulation then so that the fan can do its thing. So let's turn it on and have a look how it works. We'll put some power on it first, or we'll turn the potentiometer up, should I say, so we've got some actual power to power the lights. So we should be seeing the top layer, the middle layer, and the bottom layer and I think that works absolutely perfectly. So there we go, we're gonna go and put this in the kitchen now and that's pretty much it. She's gonna be working and functioning as she should be doing. So just a quick, short little vlog today. Of course, all the usual stuff. If you are new to the channel, then do me a favor and subscribe. You're gonna miss out on a lot of other exciting, beery, techy kind of things if you don't. And can I please beg you, go down to the description below. We are nominees for the North Knotts Business Awards for here, Harrison's Brewery, and our pub and restaurant as well, The Brew Shed. Please go along and vote for both of them. And why not chuck in a vote for our neighbours as well. They're up for Best Independent Retailer, Iron Tree Designs, and they're a real nice bunch of people. So they're the three tickets that we'd like you to support. And I suppose after you've done that, you may as well nip across to harrisonsbrewery.com, check out our shop, and maybe buy yourself a vacant gesture or two. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.